Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. This is a video I've been looking forward to doing for a long time. I started working on improving my home rack in the summer of 2016, so this is the culmination of over two years of work. This is how the rack looks now, and I will go into the individual parts in more detail later. But first I'd like to take a look back to where I came from and talk about some of the decisions I made to get here. I actually managed to find some old footage from my original setup, which, apart from the addition of the QNAP NAS, hadn't actually changed much in a good couple of years. At that time, the router supplied by my ISP was at the heart of the system, but when I discovered that I was not able to take advantage of the guest Wi-Fi functionality of the Apple Airport time capsule, because I had no option but to run it in bridge mode, I started to look at other options. You can also see the Netgear switch, which I'm still using today, which was allowing me to increase bandwidth on the network using link aggregation from the QNAP back to my MacBook. The first step was actually to invest in a separate modem, which was the Draytech Vigor 130, which has been an excellent modem, so good in fact I may do a separate video just on that. Once I started down this road, I had to start planning ahead and even though I didn't have one piece of rack mount gear at first, I decided to get a rack. I looked at a few options but eventually decided on an 18U rack from a Polish company called Zpass. The rack itself was pretty reasonable and even though the rack arrived complete on a pallet, I think the delivery was also fairly reasonable. As well as the glass door and also a wooden top, Zpass included a rack shelf, a cooling fan with a power supply for that and some cable management. Their customer service was excellent during the rack purchase, but not so good when I started to look for accessories, which I'll discuss later. After running all the CAT6 and CAT6A cable into the keystone patch panel, my first attempt at building the rack did not look great. Just a couple of things to note, tucked in at the bottom left there is the PoE injector for my access point, as I didn't have the PoE switch at this stage and also the keyboard and trackpad I was using with the HDMI output of the QNAP. You can also see the Netgear switch repurposed here, along with a 10100 switch that was given to me by a friend who no longer needed it, and just behind that is a rack mounted mains power extension. Once I got around to tidying that lot up, the rack ended up looking like this for a good while, at least the last year. There were a couple of Ubiquiti networking additions at this stage, but before those came the UPS. I've actually done a couple of videos on this APC SMX750 UPS unit, so please have a look at those. I could have used a smaller capacity 1U unit here, but they only come with a maximum of 4 outlets, and I knew long term that I was going to need more than that, which is what led me to the SMX, which also gave me the option of fitting a network monitor card. Again, I go into that in much more detail in the UPS videos. Next up is the QNAP sitting nicely on the shelf that came with the rack and the Draytech modem. I managed to find some cable management that fitted the look of the rack, and that was badly needed. When I purchased the Ubiquiti 16 port PoE switch, I thought that was going to be overkill at first, but I ended up having every available RJ45 port populated. It got me through until I eventually added the 10GBE switch, but there are times when I regretted not going for the 24 port model. Then comes the USG Pro 4. I may do a separate video on this router at some stage, but although it seems like overkill again for a home network, there have been some recent firmware updates by Ubiquiti that have made this router ideal for my needs. Above that is just a drawer, but it allows me to keep keyboards and trackpads and also things like hard drive screws to hand. And finally the CAT6A patch panel, with all the CAT6A leads running up through some cheap cable management. You can see here the wooden top and spacers allowing ventilation out through the top of the cabinet, and also my old Dell monitor when I had the QNAP connected via HDMI with a virtual machine running Windows 10. The rack actually got worse before it got better. This was how it looked a few months ago, and you can see I had added the fan that came with the cabinet at the top. I had removed the cable management slot at this stage to attach some brushes that came from something else. 
The next major addition was the Synology 12 Bay NAS and the QNAP is gone. When I started this project, I had fully planned on getting a QNAP NAS with 10 gigabit ethernet capabilities, but I had a series of problems with the QNAP that encouraged me to look at alternatives. And once I'd tried the live demo of Synology's DSM software, there was no going back. This was despite one huge reason that had put me off Synology up to that stage. At the time of purchase, not one of their 12 bay rack mounts would actually fit in my cabinet. I did find this slightly frustrating as QNAP have several models in a suitable form factor, but I just did not want to go back to QNAP by this stage. Another addition was the Ubiquiti Switch 16XG with four 10 gig ethernet ports and 12 SFE plus ports. Again, I'd originally planned on getting a Netgear 10 gig switch with only RJ45 ports, but after using the Unify management software with my other Ubiquiti gear, I couldn't go back to Netgear's web interface. The fan is slightly clearer in this shot, and it did give me peace of mind during the hot summer that we've just had, but I'm only aware of the thermostat kicking into action on one occasion. So once I had all the key pieces in place, I knew I would eventually have to tidy it all up. In addition to some rack hardware and direct attached copper SFP Plus cables, and some more mains leads for the UPS, I also found a really useful rail extension made by StarTech on the bottom left. I mentioned earlier that I had some trouble with the rack suppliers, and specifically the rack angle used by ZPass's proprietary. I tried to get some short lengths of rack angle to allow me to fit the UPS and Synology together at a different depth from the switch gear that had the cabling at the front. But following several attempts to contact ZPass about supplying me with the angle that they advertise in their catalogue on their website, they did not even take the time to reply to my emails. Even if they'd emailed back to say sorry but it's just not available in the UK, that would have been more professional than just ignoring me entirely. Once I'd emptied the rack, it gave a clearer view of the difference the StarTech extensions made to the layout. One of the biggest challenges was getting the patch panel out of the small slot in the back panel, without having to rewire the whole lot, but I was lucky that I had chosen a keystone patch panel. All I had to do was pop off each of the keystones and feed the cables through the slot. You can see a neat trick I discovered with the cable ties which helped me make sure the cables were refitted back in the same order and I eventually used the same trick to manage some of the patch cables during the final stages. This is what the reordered cabinet looked like before any of the cable work was completed. The only additions were the cable management slot with some brush fitted and a ventilated 1U blanking panel. One thing I tried to do during the planning process was to space out the network equipment to avoid any possible temperature problems. The cabinet was almost complete by this stage, but you might notice the loose ends of the SFP Plus direct attached copper as I was still waiting for the 10 gig network card from Synology when I filmed these shots. But even with a lot of the patch panels now directed towards the Switch XG, the original 1 gig 16 port is still almost at full capacity. You can see here how the zip ties help me manage the patch cables. I have since swapped out the odd cable in the first port on the left hand side, which is actually the modem cable with an RJ11 on the other end, so it took some time to find a converter to allow me to use one of the standard cables. This is the view from the front and I was really pleased with the way everything fell into place. But before seeing the final layout, I wanted to talk briefly about the power cables. You might remember the original cable management that came with the rack that I hadn't found a use for. Once I mounted the plugs that couldn't fit in the UPS, I used the cable management panel to get the AC cables under control and I'm really pleased with the way that turned out. And this was my solution to get the Synology to fit in the cabinet. I had to cut the slot by hand, which was a bit of a nightmare, but it allowed me to fit the back panel, which has not actually been attached to the cabinet for at least a year and a half. The one thing I did miss from the QNAP was having an HDMI out to give me access to the NAS interface when I was working at the cabinet. So I purchased a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus now that they're offering the option to power it via a PoE hat and it works really well. So after years in the planning and building, the rack is finally coming together. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.